With Wealth for Life, there is a little bit of personal care. We didn't go through the investing and I don't think we'd be, we'd be where we are today. I would never go to a bank directly again. <laughs> Let's do it together. It gives me more confidence. We feel totally secure now. It was just easy. There's a, a capability there that we didn't even know we had. Stressful wise. Anthony's always there. After the first meeting, those fears were gone. They make us comfortable yeah. before we made the next step to invest. He wants to work until they're 80. <laughs> Seriously. We actually have seen the benefits. It's like nothing's changed, but we're getting wealthier every day. They've uh, laid out the plan out for the next 20 years and... It looks great. And I know exactly where I'm going. They really are the real deal. We feel included. I'm able to retire at a very younger age. We're in the process of building our dream home after 18 years being stuck in the one home. Financial independence for us and for our children. Build something for our son Rocco. And set up our kids' futures as well. Set themselves up for what? They were amazing. They certainly will make a big difference to you. They change their lives. We feel included. Go to Wealth for Life. Full stop. Hello guys, Anthony Peluso here, founder and CEO of Wealth for Life. Coming at you, what are we, uh, end, of, end of October? End of October 2020, and what a 2020 it's been. If you're in Australia, if you're in Melbourne, Victoria, you would have heard all about it recently, how uh, lockdown is about to end, I believe. Okay, has ended as of, um, uh, as of last week. So, you know. Out we go. So <laughs> uh, it's so weird. So it's you know like being locked up for all this time, and you feel like you're out of jail. And depending on who you speak to, you don't know whether to uh, thank our uh, wonderful premier or otherwise. But I'll leave that up to you, the viewer, to decide. Okay, that could that could raise some interesting conversation, to say the least. So. Again, we take your questions and what you want to hear. It's all about you guys and what it is that you want to hear. And uh, you know, the, the, the most obvious question right now is, what's going to happen to the Australian property market? Now that we're all let out of home and out of lockdown, what's gonna to happen to the Australian property market 2021 and beyond, okay? Now, whilst uh, there's no Nostradamus anywhere around, okay? There are certain things that you can use as indicators to give you um, a lot of confidence, one way or another, with regards to the, what's gonna to happen to the Australian real estate market moving forward. So here we are towards the end of 2020. Um, if we look at it right now from an economy perspective, the Australia survived this coronavirus quite well, okay? If you recall going back to March this year, it was all doom and gloom, you know, JobKeeper came in, uh, banks started to freak out, consumer confidence uh, spiraled, spiraled um, downwards. But dis despite a recession and, um, you know, unemployment, I think we've got unemployment sitting just under 8% right now. Um, the Australian real estate market's actually done quite well, okay? For those of you that were predicting the market to crash by 10, 20%, guys, that hasn't happened, okay? And there's a um, there's, there's reasons for that. Um, number one, interest rates have been historically low, okay? We haven't seen interest rates this low, I think, since 1969. And I don't see that changing moving forward, okay? So interest rates moving up, at least for the next three to four years, ain't gonna happen, okay? So you can take a lot of confidence in knowing that interest rates will stay where they are. And you know what, may even drop by the time you're actually uh, watching this, all right? Um, so good property as well has actually kept its value, all right? So I've always, I always talk about in, in, my, um, in my lectures, in my webinars, that you've gotta know the difference between great real estate and average real estate, okay? Not all real estate is created equally, okay? So, if, you, if you're holding really good real estate, blue chip real estate, real estate you'll know that the, the values have been protected throughout this um, coronavirus and they haven't dropped. And that's usually because 
one of the locations that they're in to the people that own them, okay? Our property market is made up by owner occupiers, okay? And um, you'll find that most people, based on a certain age, have their mortgages relatively well paid off. So they're not in a position where they're forced to sell, whether they're unemployed or whether they've been laid off um, or in restricted hours, they're not forced to sell, okay? So there's no urgency for them to move their, their market, their, their, um, their real estate. Um, also, you know, to their credit, banks have worked with, with homeowners um, quite somewhat over the last six to 12 months or six, you know, six months or so. And if you look at some of the stimulus packages that the government's bought in, the fact that interest rates are actually, you know, like I said, quite low, and people have been able to defer their mortgage repayments, okay? Um, banks are, 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 you know, we're in, they're in it with you guys, okay? They're helping you out. I'm not, you're not going to see banks all of a sudden say, hey, Johnny, you need to pay back your mortgage. If not, we're gonna foreclose your property. That's not gonna happen, okay? Too much of the banking sector right, is underpinned um, by, by the real estate, so, and real estate loans. And banks don't want that bad PR of uh, being recognised as the big, big bad wolf that came and, and asked you to actually either pay your mortgage or they were going to take possession of your property. Okay, that's not something that Westpac and NAB and all the big lenders want to be recognised as doing. Okay, and um, again, but watch what you see in the media because sometimes the media will actually amp that up to be worse than what it actually is. Um, and traditionally, the number of foreclosures in Australia, even you know, irrespective of what the economy is doing, is is actually being quite low. All right, so, um, and you know, if you look at it too, our entire economy, and I talk about this in previous um, webinars that I've done, our entire economy is underpinned significantly by the real estate and construction industry. Okay, so behind retail and healthcare, the construction and real estate industry is the third biggest industry in the country. So um, it creates a lot of jobs. I think well over 1.1 million jobs go in that industry. And then you've got all the spin-off industries that are connected to real estate, right? So the last thing the government wants is to have unemployment skyrocketing, right? Because the government's main form of income is tax, right? What you pay from your income. If you're not working, you can't pay tax. If you can't pay tax, the government loses a form of income. So they also have a vested interest in making sure that as many people as possible are working, especially in the real estate and construction industry, right? Um, and the government understands as well that they need consumer confidence to be quite high, right? Because for as long as, as, long as consumer confidence is high, the economy is, you know, is moving along in the way that it should be. So just be mindful of these people that you know, make these predictions that you know, our real estate market is gonna drop by 20, 30, 40, 50%, okay? I've heard these predictions for the last 10, 15 years, right, when the economy does what it, you know, when, when markets, um, and when the economy you know, goes from, you know, uh, when, when it stalls, right? And it never happens because the people that make these predictions don't really understand how the economy and the real estate markets are connected, all right? So, um, and you know, now that we're all out of lockdown too, the one thing that uh, I, I'm noticing right now in talking to a lot of buyers and a lot of sellers, it's almost like they've been waiting for this shotgun to say that they can, you know, <laughs> leave their house and start trading again, you know? in talking to a lot of auctioneers and real estate agents, you know, you know, there's this thing like, when you, when you suppress something, no matter what it is, right, when you suppress something for a long period of time, the longer that you suppress something, the more you're gonna be compelled to express it, okay? This is, I, I talk about this with relation to money, right? When, when you, you have people that save, 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 and they do no spending. At some point, they're gonna blow all that money, okay? And then you've got all these people that spend, 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 right? And like, they're not gonna have anything to save, right? So you need a really good balance of both. Don't get into this saving is better than spending, okay? You need both, right? And this is the thing that I'm seeing right now with this pent up demand. There's a lot of people out there now waiting for, you know, waiting for these lockdowns to, um, to be to to be um, to be taken away and these restrictions to go, 
and people are cashed up, people have got their finances in order. Um, you know, here we are moving into summer, out of spring, moving into summer. There's gonna be a lot of trading of real estate over the next three to six months, okay? Sellers wanna sell. Um, you know, if, if you look at some of the Bayside suburbs, all of them are holding off for these restrictions to, 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 to ease and these lockdowns to end so they can put their properties back on the market, okay? Or put them on the market. And then you've got buyers that just wanna go out of their hive and see a piece of real estate and inspect it so they can buy it, all right? So I think that's gonna to lead to, 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 to good um, activity moving forward, right? And then you've got the stimulus packages, right? That the government's made available, which along with, you know, first home owners grants, um, low interest rates and, you know, and, and stimulus packages available by, by the government, whether it be your first home owners grants or, or your builder boost, that again is pushing credit out of the bank and it's getting buyers out in the market and buying. And keep in mind, owner occupiers make up a majority of the market. They're the ones that drive the market, not investors, okay? So that's why you'll see a lot of assistance from the government and otherwise go to owner occupiers and not so much investors, all right? So what do we make of this looking forward, right? So, you know, one of the things that I always look at are, you know, are indicators, things that can help you gauge or, or, or predict what's gonna happen. And whilst there's no crystal ball and no one's gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen, you can look for things that have happened in the past and how that may eventuate moving forward as well. So if you look at every time we've had a, a crisis of some sort, be it global or, or, you know, or related to this country, usually after a crisis, our markets bounce, bounce up you know, respond very, very well. Okay, if you look at the global financial crisis, and I remember, you know, I remember having conversations with bankers, and these guys, back at that time, 2008, 2009, these guys were freaking out. They were getting rid of all their assets, getting rid of all their stocks, just, they were expecting a bloodbath. And if you've been around long enough, you would have seen that that didn't eventuate, at least not in Australia, right? So even going back as far as, I think, the 1920s, right? Every time there's been a crisis or, or some catastroph catastrophic event around the world, pay attention and do your homework, right? At the end of that uh, crisis, our markets respond very, very, very well. And it comes back down to that, what you suppress, you will eventually express, right? Um, you know, banks right now have got relaxed lending criteria. Uh, I think it was a month ago that they basically loosened their lending criteria to enable more credit to flow through our economy, all right? So that's gonna provide people with more access to credit. The Reserve Bank of Australia right now have also forecasted that they're more than happy to reduce interest rates further if they need to be, um, and, you know, and they wanna support jobs and businesses. And I think unemployment's going to be the, the X factor or the big thing that this country needs to really look at because that's gonna drive everything else, right? Um, our economy does need to recover for the reasons that we've actually spoken about already. And banks and the Reserve Bank of Australia, I think you, you, you'll see a lot of, of them get behind that and support that, that push moving forward. Um, I'm also predicting that a lot of uh, migration um, and international buyers are gonna be coming into the market again next year. We're starting to see a lot of that activity um, in, the, in the industry already. Um, there are a number of big purchases that have been made out of, in Melbourne CBD over the last few weeks, off-market transactions worth millions by international buyers, okay? So I'm expecting that to continue moving forward. And first homeowners are really stronger than ever right now, okay? Because of these stimulus packages, because of access to credit, record low interest rates, um, I don't see interest rates really doing much moving north for the next four to five years, okay? Purely based on what you can fix the, uh, your interest rates at right now for a five year period. So a lot of positive news moving, you know, a lot of, lot of good indicators moving ahead, okay? I'm certainly not predicting a market to crash. Um, yes, JobKeeper is going to end at some point, right? I think it's at end of December and you've got a lot of these stimulus packages that'll end in March next year. I'm, I'm expecting banks to actually work with consumers, to work with buyers and to homeowners to get them through any difficult period moving forward, okay? 
they've pretty much indicated as much anyway if you if you um, if you pay attention to their commentary um, so if you're a homeowner if you're an investor or want to be an investor or homeowner want to investor or homeowner what should you be doing moving forward okay now I've always said this and it's you know it's, it's come to fruition over the last six months the smartest investors right now are taking advantage of the opportunities that present themselves I'm expecting those opportunities to disappear around March next year okay don't go waiting like most Australians do to hear about it in the news and read about it in the paper. When you're picking up this paper, okay, great, great, uh, great paper by the way. When you when you read the Financial Review and you and you see the markets are actually taking off again and moving forward, you're too late. You're too late because that's that's that sheep mentality, you know. I won't dip my toe in the water, I'll wait for somebody else to dip their toe in the water, okay? It's you, you too late because then you have competition. You're out there with everybody else getting into the real estate market or investing. You've got competition and what does competition do? Competition pushes prices up. So then you start to pay a premium, okay? You know, Warren Buffett, the richest man in the world, second richest man in the world, said, you know, when others are greedy, be fearful. When others are fearful, be greedy okay so you all want, almost want to do the opposite to what most people are doing right don't wait to pick the bottom of the top of the market okay most professionals can't do this and by the time most people have actually worked it out or read about it like I said it's too late okay there's some incredible opportunities right now smart investors are able to see what others can't see and that's why they're smart investors and do so well if you've got your finances in order if you can borrow money all right. If your job is secure and you can borrow money and you know how cheap interest rates are and depending whether you're a homeowner or an investor, there are incredible opportunities in the marketplace right now. Just have a look at some of my previous webinars that I've done and I talk about this and some of the results that our clients have actually achieved. Um, I think it's good times moving forward. The, the country, our economy needs it. All indicators are pointing to a recovery in our economy moving forward. Call me optimistic if you want, but I'm able to, to, to see what drives our markets. I'm able to pay attention to what's happening around the world and how and what effect that happens, what effect that actually has on our markets. And um, there's a lot of evidence of this right there under your nose if you choose to look and choose to read. Okay, so if you're in a position to borrow money, okay, your job is secure. Get yourself into a get yourself into the real estate market. Okay, the next five years, my prediction, the next five years from 2021 to 2026 are going to be extremely strong. Okay, for you know reasons I've covered and for others that we won't have time to on on this webinar. But stick to the 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 core cities and states that I've mentioned. Okay, if you're looking to make money out of real estate, stick to Melbourne and Sydney. Okay, I've got 60 years worth of evidence to support that. Okay. Um, based on population, based on employment, based on infrastructure, based on plan infrastructure. Even have a look at the budget that just got released not long ago and have a look at where that money is flowing. That'll tell you the, where our governments have their attention. All right. So guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, that's my take on where the market is going to be going moving forward post pandemic, post coronavirus, post 2020. Um, Give us a call. Get get to us here at Wealth for Life. Like you know, one three hundred seven nine three eight double seven. If you're in in, in Australia, or wealthforlife.com.au, have a look at what our clients are achieving. Okay, I think one of my boys yesterday just put out a video, and you know, hit the nail on the head. This is not about real estate. Okay, this is about improving the quality of your life. Right, think. Have a look at your environment right now. Have a look at your situation. Right, tell me. That you couldn't have, you, you you know, you couldn't have done with more money, or another stream of income over the last six months, right? If you think about the last six months and these lockdowns, for some of you guys, it's a preview of what, sadly, what retirement may look like. You need to be paying attention to this, okay? No one's going to knock on your door and force this down your throat, okay? Have a look at where you are right now financially. If you rely on one income stream. You're in a very vulnerable position because your employer could, like that, cut that inflow, right? Cut that income. 
you want to set yourself up with multiple income streams. So if, if you lose one or two income streams, it won't affect your, your quality of life. But have a look at why you're doing this, okay? Nobody wants property. No, nobody goes through life and saying, hey, I want to invest in real estate. It's not real estate that we're talking about, okay? It's about the quality of your life. It's about improving the quality of your life. It's about giving you and your family and your loved ones more choices, okay? Money offers you more choices. It enables you to help you. It enables you to help you and your family and your children. It enables you to help out your friends. It, it enables you to help out society, right? Your favorite charities, the people in need, your churches, Imagine what you could do next time that there's a fire, you know, uh, throughout Australia and our firefighters need help. Wouldn't it be great to be able to contribute to those people? Look at some of the people starving around the world and, and, and you know, and what we've gone through over the last, you know, 10, 10 years, right, a, a, as a nation and, a, and as, a, as a society, right? It's actually quite greedy to just think about yourself. I'm working for a living, I'm working nine to five and I don't need any more. You know, what does that say about you, right? Be in a position where you can help others. There is no, I tell you, man, there is no greater feeling in life, no greater feeling in life than being able to help another human being, okay? Because of your contribution, because of your success, you're able to help other people, okay? If you've been able to do that, you know what I'm talking about, okay? And sadly, so many of us want to do that but we're never in a position to do so financially. So mate, don't make this about you, okay? Make this about what you can do for you, your family, and the people around you, and how you can improve the lives of yourself, your life, and the lives of others, because that's true wealth. When you can help another human being, right? That's true wealth. Anyway, hope you guys have got that. I hope you appreciate the, um, the data we're giving to you. I know you do, because of all the comments you guys give us, so thank you so much. Um, hit us up with your questions. Um, we love to, you know, we, we love the feedback, and we do do we do these webinars because of you guys. Okay, the questions that you guys have got are what we want to provide answers to. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're very grateful for all your feedback, and keep your, you know, keep your heads up, guys. Keep your heads up. It's it's been, like I said, uh, the most challenging year to date. I'm sure you'd agree to that but there are good things ahead, okay? There are really, really good things ahead. And I, for one, wanna support you, your families, your loved ones, and at Wealth for Life, we wanna do anything we can to help you guys out. Take care, we'll see you next week. Happy investing.